Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Colligan, and I am happy to welcome you on behalf of Fairfield's mm -hmm. Alumni Relations Office. With me this evening are Father Jerry Blazczyk, who is our Vice President for Mission and Ministry, and Father Charles Allen, who you all know was a beloved fixture on our campus for many decades. And we miss him very much since he retired last May, but we're so happy to have him with us tonight. And before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items really quickly. I ask that you please make sure you keep your microphones muted throughout the conversation just to minimize any distraction. And second, I recommend you use the speaker view rather than gallery view in Zoom, just to make sure that our featured speakers remain the focus of your screen. And finally, we encourage you to use the chat feature if you have any questions for Father Allen. We have a large group with us this evening. He's a very popular man, so I don't know if we'll get to all of the questions, but we will certainly do our best to answer as many as possible in the time allotted. And now I will turn things over to Father Jerry. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Jessica and Charlie. Thank you for making time to be with us. Jessica, you said uh, that you miss Charlie. Uh, and uh, I want to echo that. Uh, and I think probably I'm echoing the sentiment, certainly of all of my Jesuit brothers and of all those hundreds of people, literally hundreds of people who are joining us tonight. Charlie, in the years that we were both at Fairfield, you and I often were traveling. Uh, or we had commitments that took us outside the community. But I have to say that I was always so happy when I came home. And if you were celebrating the liturgy, I knew that the homily would not be too long and it wouldn't be boring. And uh, <laughs> it would be uh, three points. And that even at the end of the day, I'd be able to follow it. And then even better, Charlie, if you were going to be at table. And if I was lucky enough to be able to sit with you, and be able to listen to your conversation, which was always so warm, so loving. And uh, if I think back, Charlie, and I can't say this of many people, Charlie, I don't think I ever heard you speak ill of anybody. Um, but I used to love to ask you, Charlie, uh, your story. Uh, I used to love to ask you to tell me more about your family and uh, especially the Allens. And so let's begin with, uh, uh, if you're reminiscing with us a little bit about your family history. All right. I always take great pride in the fact that uh, I'm a, by nature, a Vermonter. My grandparents, at least on my father's side, both came <clears throat> down from Vermont. And uh, my great grandfather, my grandfather took great pride in talking about his relationship with Ethan Allen. And, uh, I can believe it. In fact, I visited Ticonderoga <clears throat> and I had a sense of Uncle Ethan and his role in my family. But the Allens were always rebels. And rebels? So I, too, I too carried on in that tradition. And that's why I joined the Jesuits. I wanted to be a rebel. And that, what was rebellious about your becoming a Jesuit? Your family wasn't exactly enthused about your being a Jesuit? Oh, no, Didn't you do the, the normal course of things and go to BC High and BC and all that? Well, I never went to BC High and I never went to BC. Uh, I was supposed to go to BC, but uh, at the last minute, uh, I joined <clears> the Jesuits and so went to uh, Shadowbrook. But uh, my rebellion came about. Be I always remember telling my father, <clears throat> don't get upset about my joining the Jesuits. There's no tuition. <laughs> Would that make him happy? Because he was all set to pay, I think it was $800 a year to BC at that time. But there was no tuition. And so I joined the Jesuits and they've taken good care of me ever since. But you've taken good care of all of us too, Charlie. Charlie, besides saving your father some tuition money, what else motivated you to join the Jesuits? <clears throat> well, I've been thinking about that all day long. And I would go back to my very early childhood on Cedric Street in Jamaica Plain. <clears throat> and I can remember going to bed at night and just laying there feeling so blessed by God that I had such a wonderful family. Uh, the people on Campion 4 will remember how much I loved the women up there. And certainly I had the good fortune of a wonderful mother and three younger sisters. Now I say, fortunate enough because they were younger and I could order them around. But I had my three younger sisters 
and they all took care of me. So I got a lot of feminine attention. And I was very grateful for that and grateful to God for having provided me with that kind of a family. And so right from the earliest years on, right from the time I was being four or five years old, I knew that ours was a loving God who was going to take care of me. And so it was that I joined the Jesuits. Wait, wait, wait. Since you had all these women loving you, what made you think that you were going to have a, a good life in the Jesuits? That I'd finally have my own bathroom. <laughs> now, you must know what that's like, Jerry. Uh, yeah, I'm grateful, Charlie. I'm grateful. Yeah. Charlie, what about now in, in your years, everybody knows that uh, the Jesuit formation is a very long process slash ordeal for some. Um, when you think, Charlie, about your journey from Shadow Brook by Lennox and Western Mass, uh, and then where did you study philosophy at BC or? No, at uh, Campion Center. At Campion Western College. Now right, where you are now, and then you did our Regency, that period of kind of internship. Where did you do that? At Cranwell. At Cranwell. What was that like, Charlie? Any memories of your time at Cranwell? Well, I always like to put it this way. When people say, do you ever miss not having had a family? I say, when I was at Cranwell, which was a boarding school, I lived on a corridor with 20 teenage boys. Now, that's the same thing as living with 20 boys for three, four, three or four years. And I, I lived up there and had a wonderful time, just loved the kids and they seemed to like me. And uh, I, I found a very wonderful, rewarding experience. Did that, did that persuade you that maybe you would want to do high school work later on? Not absolutely, no. Uh, uh, I was certainly open to all kinds of other sorts of work and I've done all kinds of other different things over the years. But certainly those years at Cranwell were very formative in terms of taking care of those kids in the dormitory. Charlie, then as I remember, of course, you went to Rome. Uh, now, I think most people have the impression that it's only the fair-haired boys and the people who were regarded as being the top of the heap who were sent to Rome. How, Charlie, did you end up getting sent to Rome? Because Father General, the great <clears throat> father Arupe, it just opened a new place of studies, the Jesu, in the city of Rome. And it was to be for the young men who were studying for the priesthood. And he was looking for people to come. And so he wrote to the provincial and said, would you please send us some good men? Well, the provincial said, well, I don't have any good men, but I do have Charlie Allen. I know he <laughs> wants to travel. And so the next thing I know, I got a letter from De Cleary saying, would you be willing to go to Rome? I said, I'd be willing to go to Quincy. I don't care where I go, just as long as I go somewhere outside of Boston. And so the next thing I know, I got a letter from the provincial saying, I'm missioning you to Rome. And so off I went and had three of the greatest years of my life living in the uh, Eternal City. Charlie, tell us more. You said it's the greatest years of your life. I thought your Fairfield years were your greatest years, but we'll let that go to later. Tell us about Rome. What made Rome so wonderful for you? Well, I've always had a <clears throat> passing interest in art. And so to live in that city with so much art around, so many wonderful museums and so many glorious places to, uh, to visit, uh, that I was quite happy there. And, uh, so it was the art, Charlie, not the, not the food? Oh, the food I loved. The food was great. But I would put the art first. What it knows? Can you remember what it was? What was it? The uh, the Vatican Museum? Was it the architecture? Was it the Borghese galleries? Anything stand out particularly among the pieces that uh, that you remember? Well, I remember my first days in Rome. Yeah. I had a wonderful rector, Father Frank Furlong, now gone to God, glorious man, and uh, he said, "Hey, Charlie." I bet you haven't been to the St. Peter's Basilica. I said, I have never been to any of those places. And he said, well, here, I'm gonna walk down there now. Let me take you for a walk. And so we walked down, I think it's the, uh, the Victor Emmanuel Monument, Victor Emmanuel uh, Parkway. We walked down that road and eventually ended up at the uh, St. Peter's Basilica. And I remember seeing St. Peter's for the first time, just being overwhelmed by the magnificence of it all. 
It's just such a glorious place. We may have lost half of Europe because of having to try to pay for it, but it was certainly worth the effort. Charlie, while you were in Rome, as I remember your stories, you took good advantage of your summers uh, to go to other countries and learn languages, right? Didn't you go to Germany, France, Spain? Let's not, not Germany. I did go to France and Spain. And uh, because once you've learned Italian, I always say if you can speak Italian, you can learn another language, another Romance language, very quickly, very poorly. And so <laughs> I, I would go and uh, live in Spain for a while using my Italian, then live in France for a while using my Spanish and my Italian, then my uh, Italian. And I got to be pretty good in those two languages. And that was a, that was a real joy. Charlie, what's the, when you came back from theology studies, did you come, I mean, obviously our, our focus and our, can, and our experience of you is primarily through Fairfield. So did you come back to Fairfield in, immediately? No, uh, <clears throat> I had hoped to go back to Fairfield Prep. I had loved Fairfield Prep where I taught for three years and I thought I'd go back there, but no, the provincial wanted me to stay around Boston for a while. Okay. The province. And so I was at BC High for a year or two there. And then I would come back to, uh, to Fairfield Prep. And then you came to Fairfield Prep. What, and what was your job at Fairfield Prep? Were you teaching or were you in administration? I was teaching uh, mathematics and some religion uh, because those were the two areas that I was interested in and had some background in. So I taught math and I taught religion. Uh, and found them very interesting and wonderful, exciting years. And what are your memories of prep from that time? What stands out? The people, the situations, the, uh, the experiences? What do you cherish from those first years of prep? Well, the kids were getting pretty rebellious by that point. Well, you said you had been a rebel. You should have understood them. I should have, but I didn't. Uh, but they were, you know, challenging, challenging. I've stayed friends with many of them since then, but uh, they were a wonderful group of kids and uh, very exciting to be with, especially living with them in the dormitory uh, and teaching them in the classroom. So uh, I, I, I was quite content there. Charlie, we always used to say that, uh, you know, living with you, we used to remark at how, and all the people you knew in Fairfield uh, all the families who were so fond of you and to which you really became uh, an adjunct member and an integral member of those families. And I remember you used to say to us that uh, it was because of your years at PrEP that you knew so many families in Fairfield. Is that right? That's remember correct. that? Uh -huh. We said that no priest should come to Fairfield University without spending a year or two at Fairfield PrEP. That's how you get to know everyone locally. When you're at Fairfield University, you get to know all the families from New Jersey, but you don't get to know anyone from Fairfield. Well, when I was at Fairfield Prep, I got to know all kinds of Fairfield families and really loved them. They were wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Charlie, what was your adage that you used to offer us so often that the story of Fairfield was New England, Boston Irish, Jesuits? Do you remember that? Well, vaguely insofar as if anyone said, how can you describe Fairfield University? I'd say it was where Boston Irish Jesuits came to educate New Jersey Italian teenagers. <laughs> many of whom are listening to you tonight. Yeah, many, I saw that list of names and many of them are out there. Charlie, then, so how long, so you were at prep as a teacher and then you, uh, then you worked as an administrator. You were, were you president or headmaster at prep for a while too? Not right away because I had to do tertianship. And uh, I kept saying to the provincial, I'd like to go someplace outside the country. I became a Jesuit because I wanted to see the world. <laughs> I said, okay, how's about going to the Philippines? There's a very good tertianship. Oh, that's right, Charlie. So that was a Manila. Good... So uh, I went and <clears throat> did my year of tertianship outside of Manila all the time thinking I would be sent back to Fairfield, which is what I wanted. 
and uh, no, the provincial who, who always knew how to mix things up sent me back to BC High. Charlie, before we get to BC High, let's go back to the Philippines. Uh, for a boy from Jamaica Plain, Jamaica Plains, even though you had lived in Rome, to be uh, to be sent to the Philippines and to be living in a popular area outside of Manila, what was that like for you, Charlie? What what memories do you bring from that time? Oh, wonderful memories. Uh, <clears throat> I love the Filipino people, and uh, they seem to like me. Uh, and uh, I had a very wonderful experience, especially because churchianship should be a time when you get out and do a lot of apostolic activity. And so I would go out and uh, got even down to the Sulu Archipelago. But you don't know where that is, Jerry. The Sulu Archipelago. Uh, it's where as a boy, if I used to remember correctly, used to read Terry and the Pirates. And that's where he came from, was the Sulu Archipelago. It's a string of islands leading out from Borneo to the south. And uh, so I went down there and did a lot of parish work down there for a while, as well as uh, close to my own uh, tuitionship outside of Manila. And it was a grand and glorious experience of living with a very different kind of people, people who uh, taught me a lot about life and about the ways that people uh, interact. And the next move then, Charlie, after tertianship was back to BC High, and you had hoped to come rather back to Fairfield. Yes. But as I say, you can never trust a provincial, <laughs> especially when he promises you something, and they promised me they'd send me back to Fairfield. And then at the last minute, they asked me, hey, we need somebody at BC High. Would you go to BC High? And I said, okay, if you need me there, I'll go there. But Charlie, you're a boy from Jamaica Plain. You didn't mind going, didn't you want to go back home? Have those three sisters take care of you again? No, because they'd all gotten married. All right, so there's no point really. Right, right, no point in showing any interest in them. Although mom and dad were still there, and thank God in good health. And so I would see them with great frequency. Charlie, now you mentioned your father. Your father used to pass on words of wisdom to you when he was driving you, as I remember. He had a lot of adages about how to be happy and make the best of life, didn't he? Yes, he did. Uh, Can you share did any also. of those? Pardon? Do you remember any of those that you would share? Well, give me one minute to think, okay? Give me sure. a few seconds just to think. Uh, maybe the most important one he always said to me was, hey, if you're gonna be a preacher, never go longer than three minutes. <laughs> and did you just, Stick to that your whole life? Pretty much so, yeah. That's why the Again, whole... that's why you have 200 friends here. Yes, yeah, because I never kept them too long in church. And, uh, your father was a wise man. He was. He came from that Vermont tradition of uh, religion was nice, but let's not get carried away by it. So, Charlie, then, then uh, well, yeah, you, somehow or other, you cajoled the provincial into sending you back to Fairfield. Well, no, it was the provincial that cajoled. Uh, if I remember, I, get, I, I always get a little confused here. I believe he cajoled Al Kelly into bringing me back to Fairfield. Oh, so he asked Al Kelly to deposit, if he could deposit you back here on, at Fairfield. Yes. Okay. Because things had not been going well administration-wise here at Fairfield Prep. And so oh, okay. he finally gave me the job that I'd always wanted, namely to be the next Jim Bowler, the next principal. And did you, so you were, you were happy to be back at Fairfield Prep? Oh, immensely, yes. Charlie, is that when you began to make the contacts that would later lead you to be chaplain to the fire department and the police department and God knows who else? Yeah, those were all happening at that time. Mm -hmm. But then I already ha had many contacts with families from my earlier years at Fairfield Prep and then later on at Fairfield University. So uh, I kept building up the number of people that I knew in town. And people used to say, you should run for mayor. And they said, well, if people like me now, they wouldn't like me if I ran for mayor. Nobody likes a politician. So I stayed away from the politics of it all, but just got to know more and more people all the time. 
Charlie, in other words, you got water here, Jerry. Sure, please. Having lived with you, I know that that's not vodka or gin. No. That was Charlie, something my mother been, taught me. Your mother taught you to be a teetotaler? Yeah. Lips that touch liquor will never touch mine. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, Charlie, another way that you got to know so many people, and I'm guessing that some of the folks here were people whom you got to know through your parish ministry. Wasn't enough that you were working at prep and then later at the university, but even when I lived with you, Charlie, I don't know how many different parishes you were going out to. How many, I mean, like, can you, can you even remember the number of parishes you worked with, worked at it uh, while your, your years here? Well, obviously there was St. Anthony's right on the road. Where the people still remember you yes. and ask for you. And I used to go out to, uh, really into the Greenwich area to uh, St. Michael's, was it? In Greenwich. And uh, then, of course, there was a couple of other parishes in Fairfield and Bridgeport that I would go to. You went to St. Pius, certainly. Yeah, I'm sure you went to St. Thomas. Yes. So long as I, they let me preach, I was happy. And St. Philip, didn't you go to St. Philip in Norwalk too? Really, because they already had a couple of good Je Jesuit priests going there. So, Assumption, uh, I think you went to in Fairfield. Yeah, I would go Holy to Assumption. Holy Cross, yeah. Holy Child, the you Infant remember, Jesus. You remember them better than I do. Well, because, you know, these are places, Charlie, where we're, wherever we go, there are people who will say, you know, hello, Father, but how's Father Allen? And I'm thinking, what, the, what am I, chopped liver? You know, all they want to know is, who, <laughs> all they want to know is, how is Father Allen? How is Father Allen? The good well, thing the we thing, love you, Charlie. What they liked about me was that I could tell a funny story. Everybody Charlie, likes but, that's, but that's always been kind of your approach. And this, this allows me to ask you a question. One of your uh, fans sent me an email knowing that I was going to have this role and uh, said, at least claims, that this is a direct quote from you. Quote, I always thought that if people could have a good, friendly relationship with me, they could have the same with God. End quote. And this person says, would you please ask Father Allen to elaborate on this? So here's the asking. Well, clearly, the priest stands between the individual and God. And you can do so much to help that individual reach out to God, whether it be through retreats, through mass, through confessions, just through private conversation. And as I say, I had fallen in love with God when I was maybe four or five years old. Suddenly realized how fortunate I was to have the family that I had, the loving mother and father. And so uh, if I could bring God to other people, give them that same sense of affection for the Almighty, I was most happy and loved doing it. So it was all about falling in love with God, Charlie, back at four or five. Yes. And wanting to introduce people to that same experience of affection and love. Mm -hmm. you, but you said it beautifully, Jerry, yes. No, I'm just repeating, Charlie, what you said and what you've done for us all. Mm -hmm. And I think and any one of us could affirm that. Charlie, I know that, um, and this is maybe telling tales out of school, that since I was director of the Murphy Center, uh, I would see you coming regularly for spiritual direction. Obviously, oh, yes. you took spiritual direction very seriously. Why has that been so important to you? Well, it goes back to my early years as a Jesuit. Uh, we obviously were provided with spiritual directors, the great father John Post and uh, the men who followed him. But then when I got out into the active apostolate, I had to go hunting around for a, uh, an advisor. And every so often the provincial would call me in and he'd say, who's, who's your spiritual director? And I'd have to say, well, I we don't have one yet. He'd say, well, you go out and get one. And so just out of sheer obedience for no other reason, I found myself going and looking for a spiritual director. And having the Murphy Center right there was perfect. Apart from obedience, what did you find that spiritual direction, how did it benefit you? Well, it, I think I'm a pretty well-balanced person to begin with. And so, but you, you need those other 
sources of uh, inspiration, of balance. Talk to individuals about what you're going on in your prayer life, what's going on in your spiritual life, what's going on in your uh, religious commitment. And so often those Jesuits that I spoke with during those years, and now more and more the women that I spoke with have been very, very helpful to me in knowing who I am and where I should be. Thank you, Charlie. Charlie, during your time here, of course, uh, it seemed, I think you pretty well always opted uh, to live in the residence halls. Is that right? That's correct. Once yes. you were, once you were, I know certainly when you were at the university, uh, what motivated you to want to live in the residence halls? Well, I always Besides like to the say- the fact that you have a, a washer in your apartment. Yeah. Well, I always used to say, Jerry, I love my brothers in Christ. I just don't want to live with them. <laughs> I think you can understand that. I think and, I can, yeah. And so I loved living in my, well, the room in which you are now living, uh, living there and then being up, going up, but still able to go to the Jesuit residence for my meals and feel a part of that community. I mean, I think, Charlie, a lot, you know, you, will know, you were notorious for being on the road doing weddings and baptisms. And my guess is that a lot of those weddings were of young people with whom you had lived on these various corridors all your years. Is that right? I have one last wedding coming up in uh, the end of August. Don't say the last. Well, you never know. Right? That's right. You never know. Charlie, I know, you know, you mentioned in the very beginning that part of the lore of the Jesuits was that you wanted to travel. Well, Charlie, when you were here, it seems to me like you always had your bag packed. And uh, one of your favorite jaunts was with the alumni trips to Europe. Do you want to reminisce? Well, because again, I'm pretty certain that uh, some of our, our, uh, our guests this evening were your fellow travelers. What were some of your favorite destinations and some of your favorite experiences on those trips? Well, as I say, I think it could break the, the groups into three parts. I would either go with alumni, or I'd go with the Glee Club, or I'd just go with uh, just general student groups. Anybody who would take you. Yeah, anybody who would take me. Right. What is it Father Bob Taft used to say? You, play, you pay the fare and I'll be there. <laughs> I suppose my favorite place, of course, has always been Italy. And I'm sorry, Charlie, we're losing you. Charlie, get close to the microphone, okay? Okay, I'm getting closer. I'm pulling That's my chair. Better. That's perfect, Charlie. Thank you. Uh -huh. Well, not so perfect now. Okay. So where were your favorite places? Sicily was my favorite place. Ah. Because, as I like to say, the glory of Sicily is that everybody within a thousand miles has at one time or another conquered Sicily. And every group has left something of themselves behind in terms of the art, the architecture, uh, the general spirit, the way of life, the food. Sicily was an extraordinarily rich and interesting place to be. And so I was so happy to go there with the uh, Glee Club, with the alumni, as well as with uh, just general student groups of one kind or another. I know you'd love to go to Rome too, Charlie. When I was posted in Rome, I met you in the Glee Club there and yes. had a good meal with you. I remember that, Jerry, because I don't know that you were that happy about being in Rome. But No, I was not thrilled. No, no. <laughs> Charlie, I, what, what I, remember I, I warned you, you would find it difficult. Charlie, I, I remember your coming back from Iceland, and I think you enjoyed those thermal baths as you described them. Well, what I loved about the thermal baths was we were in this bath with maybe a thousand other people. And all of a sudden, somebody cried out from another group, my God, look, it's Father Allen. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to be recognized. It was a group from Easton, from the parish up there where I've done a lot of work. And so uh, is Janet still on the line there? You Janet, are you there? Indeed, Janet, I am. Janet, do you remember what happened when in, in Iceland? Fill us in. I overheard a group talking about uh, their being from Connecticut, and then we started chatting. 
And I said, I was from Fairfield and they asked me if I knew somebody by the name of Father Allen. And I said, most definitely. In fact, he's with me. And they thought I was kidding. I said, well, you might not recognize him, but if you look over there <laughs> and they went uh, <laughs> waiting over to surprise him. Oh my goodness. What other places, Charlie, did you enjoy? Sicily, certainly Iceland. Well, any of the places I went to, certainly when I think back to the Philippines, uh, going out when I was working in admissions at BC and at, in admissions at Fairfield, uh, going out to California, going out to uh, other parts of this country, to Mexico, oh, going down. Of course, Janet, help me out now. We just read about the death of one of, was it Julia? That we knew in Nicaragua. Yes, that was very sad news. Our guide in Nicaragua from the Mustard Seed Organization. She, she passed, passed away. away, and that was a wonderful experience. We went down to Nicaragua to work for a week in one of his. Uh, what is it? Uh, it was a, it was a school for children with who had been abandoned because of usually because of some physical handicap they were suffering from. Oh, we had a great time there. I just loved it. Charlie, there's another question that someone sent me earlier this week saying, now clearly uh, we're looking forward to this opportunity to celebrate Father Allen for everything that he gave to us. But would you ask Father Allen to talk about the blessings that he feels he received from being here at Fairfield? Well, I always say the one thing we all want is to be wanted. And I certainly felt that when I was at Fairfield Prep and Fairfield University, that you were wanted by the people. They deeply appreciated what you could do for them. And I, I never felt that my life was not, was lacking in meaning because of what these wonderful people asked me to do for them. Wow, Charlie. Charlie, going now, when you look back, we talked about your many years here, and I suggested that our formation program is so long. Were there Jesuits who particularly impressed you? Or were there Jesuits that made you feel like, well, I don't want to be like this one? Uh, so what, who are the Jesuits who stand out for you in your memory of your life here at Fairfield? Because when you were here, Charlie, there were, what, 70, 80 Jesuits at one stage? When I first arrived in 1959, was it? Uh, as I say, I think it was like 75 Jesuits in the community. But the people I remember most of all, because I could almost go through it, uh, one of the wonderful things here at Campion Center is the graveyard out and back. That brought to the graveyard, I see the graves of so many wonderful men whom I knew. I think of Father, uh, I know he meant a lot to the women who he taught. And that was Father T. Joe Callahan, Jerry O'Callaghan. Uh, you remember him, Elaine? I see, I see Tom and Elaine out there nodding their heads. Yes, we remember Father O'Callaghan so well. Such a kind and wonderful religion teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big tall Jerry O'Callaghan. But then there was Jerry Father O'Callaghan. There was Father John Post. There was Father Larry Langruth. There were many, many men who uh, whose names now are on, on the buildings or can be found around here on campus, or maybe in one of the graves in the graveyard. Just great, great men. Now were there a few that I didn't like? Yes, I could name a few that I didn't like, but uh, they were few and far between. Charlie, one of the advantages of going back to Campion Center is not only the cemetery, but the uh, the, the Jesuit confreres with who are still among the quick, uh, who you're living with now. Father Pell used to always enjoy, Father Pelletier used to like to go up to Campion Center because he got a good breakfast every morning. I must be a delight to be back with Father Pell and and I Father Brownreiter. What about what about your uh, your being with your confreres? Again, who, what, what's that like? Oh, it's been wonderful. Especially, you mentioned uh, Pell, Walter Pelletier. Great man, saintly, saintly, saintly man. 
and I see him almost on a daily basis. In fact, I think I saw him at supper this evening. And Father Robert Bronrother. Uh, Bob is, of course, a local boy. He came from Trumbo, went to Fairfield Prep, and then joined the Jesuits. And he's had a very interesting and exciting life since then. And so uh, I see, uh, see him all the time. But there are many, many other Jesuits that I feel close to that I have known in one place or another especially now that we have a number of New York Jesuits living with us. Charlie, how did you manage getting through you, Charlie, who were so much used to being on the road and having so many friends around you? What was it like to be there during these last 14, 16 months? Must have been quite solitary for you. Well, it, it was the first three or four weeks that I was here because, because when I arrived, I was immediately put in quarantine. You were in quarantine. Yeah, for the first couple of weeks, and that was hard. But since then, you've had enough company. I know that there are a number of these folks here uh, who have made excursions up to Campion Center and have uh, taken you out on the portico or in the front porch and had a chance to be with you. Yes. Yeah, I've had some great groups. I think Laura, is, is Laura Inserto still on the line here? Laura and Serta, she is. Laura, are you there? Yes, I'm here. So did you go up to see Charlie? What was that like? How did you find him? Oh, wow. We made a recent visit two weeks ago, and he is stronger than ever and telling great stories and missing everybody at Fairfield. And most of all, missing Laura and her family. Yes. Oh, we had a wonderful visit, Father Allen. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Laura. We are ready to entertain. This is your chance to ask Charlie all those questions you've been dying to, to ask him. So please, uh, Jessica, do you have any questions that you'd like to field or others of you, please send them through chat. I did get one question sent directly <clears throat> to me. And it is, how did Father Allen manage to wear so many hats around campus and within the town itself? He was everything from alumni chaplain to glee club chaplain and even chaplain to the fire department. So Father Allen, how did you do that? Well, I always remember my father's good advice. Don't work hard. Don't what? Don't work? Don't work hard. Don't work hard. Is that a Vermont tradition? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Don't tire yourself out. And so, hey, being chaplain to the fire department, that was wonderful and exciting. To the police department, mm -hmm. the same way. Uh, but I'd never had to kill myself in order to do any of those jobs. I just had to be there. But that was always your gift, Charlie, that your mm -hmm. being there was, was, what, was the, what people really cherished. Yeah, isn't there a wonderful movie with, uh, what was it, Being There? I don't know. Who's the fellow? He's the Pink Panther guy, Peter Sellers. And I think he has a movie, Being There. And that's what life comes down to. Can you be there? Jen Harding, I think you wanted to ask something. Do I see you here, Jen? Oh, yes. Where and when is Father Allen's upcoming wedding? What's the, what is this wedding that you're doing, Jen Harding asks? It's going to be on Cape Cod. Oh, my goodness. And the, the last weekend of August. Brendan, somebody or other, is marrying Marcy. What is her name? Uh, Mary something or other. I've forgotten their names now. Charlie, somebody else notices, again, somebody who's taken into account all of the weddings that you've done, so many couples, so many stag mates. Uh, and even though you only gave them three minutes of homilies at those weddings, if you look back at all of these weddings and all of these couples and families that you've gotten to know so well, um, what advice did you give to them then? Or what advice now with the perspective of age would you wish you had given them? Oh my God, I've got to think about that one for a second. I'd always tell them, if nothing else, try to know what the other person is looking for. Uh, insofar as you have a sense of what uh, your husband or wife is hoping to get from this relationship, 
it allows you to uh, respond accordingly. And so that would be the first thing I would say. The second thing would be, what about his relatives? What about his parents? Oh, about yeah, his the sisters? families. What are they looking for? And try to respond accordingly. And the last thing would be, what is God looking for? And if you can answer that question, God bless you. I think you're well on your way to having a perfect relationship. I see the Mary in love. We're welcoming questions or comments to Father. Does Marianne Alaska have something that she wants Marianne to say? Marianne wants to mention something. Marianne, is this mentioning it to Father heart to heart or is this a public mentioning? It, it is an amazing mentioning. Um, Father Allen was a <clears throat> teacher at the um, um, St. Vincent's College graduation uh, several years ago, and he talked about his dad. And he said, whenever you asked how you were doing, he would say, wonderful. It didn't matter how he was feeling, but he would say, wonderful. And that has been really part of my life to say, you know, it's wonderful. As long as you have your faith and your, your family and your friends, everything is wonderful, no matter what else is happening. Just to clarify that a bit, that was the graduation ceremony for St. Vincent's College. Mm -hmm. And they gave me an honorary degree, the only honorary yeah. degree I have. Yeah. I'm very proud of it. But in my little talk, I said, my grandfather taught me so much. Grand I'm sorry, grandfather, yeah. Whenever I'd ask him, how are you doing, Grandpa? He'd always say, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And one time I said to him, Grandpa, are you always that wonderful? He said, no, but I like to tell people how I want to feel. Uh, that yeah. gives me a goal to work for. Yeah. I kept that in mind over the years. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Thank you for that. That was a great moment in my life. Yeah, it was. Colleen Goebel says that she loved going to your Christmas masses, Charlie, and hearing you, that what you offered and how you were present made her and I'm sure other people so happy. In fact, she claims to have tapes of those stories of yours. Oh, I hope she puts them together and sends them to me. Now, where's Colleen? Is, her, is Colleen on the uh, screen there? Colleen, are you on? Identify yourself, Colleen, if you dare. She may be a modest friend of yours, Charlie. I wonder if she was the woman who taped my talk. She the, says she taped them. I taped him because his stories were so good. She may have been the one who taped me when I gave the talk at the uh, St. Uh, Vincent's College ceremony. And uh, it was on television. She worked for Channel, what is it? Uh, the uh, local channel there, the... Uh, we're not going to keep oh. Charlie. We're, Charlie is now expecting his bowl of ice cream, which comes around this time. So we don't want to hold him back from his ice cream for too long. It could be less than wonderful if we do. So uh, last chance, friends, for it's questions, like, comments to Charlie. Like there is one other question. Father Allen, did you have any babies that you christened that then they grew up and you married them when they were older? <clears throat> yeah, my nephew. <laughs> Christopher, uh, my sister's boy, I always remember baptizing him and then he went through Fairfield University, chiefly because, because of Uncle Charlie, he didn't have to pay anything, but he graduated from Fairfield University and would eventually meet a very nice young woman and uh, the two married and I did their wedding. So that, that's that great, Charlie. Circle. And I baptize his babies. We have someone else that says, Father Alan, you have traveled so much and been so many places and done so many things. Is there one particular memorable moment that truly stands out? One moment that stands out. All right, I think it happened when I first came to Fairfield and I was living on Campion 4. Are there any other students here from Campion 4? I was up on Campion 4. And this I'm one in young Campion 4. Oh. Eileen. 
Which Eileen is that? Ward. Oh, yes, Eileen, how are you doing? Good. Is Terry with you? No, she's at her house. Okay. When I was living on Campion 4 my first year, this young woman knocked on my door. And I opened the door and she came in. And she said, I need your help, please. And what it was, was her father was dying. And later on, I noticed that I didn't see her any longer on the corridor. And when I asked, they said, oh, no, she went home because her father passed away. And so I got about 10 of our students and we got into the van and drove up to, I think it was Vernon, mm -hmm. Connecticut, where she lived. And we all went to the wake. And I always remember when I walked in with those students, the sense of joy that they exuded just meant so much to her, not so much to her, but to her mother because her mother was so worried about her now that the father had passed away. And I always said, hey, if I did nothing else in this life, at least I brought some happiness to that family. So does that answer your question, Eileen? Or was, it, was that Eileen Ward that answered that, asked that question? No, that was someone, okay. Father Ellen, that sent uh, directly to me, it's Jessica. Oh, okay. Someone had sent that right to me. I That's see the good, picture yeah. now. Eileen Ward's picture is up there. Yep. Look at that picture of Eileen. You can understand why I saw about living on camp before. <laughs> I have one other question that was just sent to me. What has been for you the greatest moment in the church during your priestly ministry? The greatest moment in the church? Mm -hmm. Possibly the funeral of... Uh, I got to remember because there's been so many popes since I uh, came here. I'm going to say the funeral of Pope John Paul II. Because I got to be the narrator for an NBC channel. And uh, oh, it was just a beautiful, moving moment. It was so sad, the death of a pope that has been so well loved. And yet at the same time, uh, such a glorious man and he had been such influ so influential in the church. <laughs> Carly, you've been with us the way, this evening, the way you were always with us, uh, with generosity and good humor and wisdom uh, and warmth. Uh, so I think I can be pretty certain that I speak for all of us in saying thank you, Charlie, for this wonderful visit that you've allowed us to pay you at Campion Center. And don't be surprised if the lot of us don't come bashing at your door or either by Zoom or in person in the weeks and months and years ahead. Thank you very much, Charlie. I hope you'll come up and visit me. Yes. We Jesuits live well, God bless us. We're well <laughs> taken you, care of up here. Thank you very much. Thank you God so much, you. Father Allen. Thank you so much, Father Jerry. Thank all of you for being here. This was the last of these personal journeys events for this academic year as we head into the summer. I know we've had many of you who attended several of these throughout the year, and we've loved being able to stay connected with all of you while we were all being apart and distant throughout distance throughout this last 15 months or so. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for your support and stay tuned for more to come. We hope you all have a wonderful rest of the night and a wonderful summer, and we will see you again soon. Thank you, Father Allen. 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 God bless you, Father Allen. Thank you, Father You heard Father Jerry come on up and visit. Father Allen. I will. Thank you. I'll be back. <laughs>